but it's bright and early on a Saturday morning, and I'm standing out here at the Wild Fig. They make the best brisket in town. We're gonna show you how to do it from front to back. All right, everybody, so we're gonna get started. This is Anthony. He's gonna guide us through the process of carving this whole thing down. As you can tell, there's a lot of extra product here. A lot of extra product, but we're gonna use everything we can. So this is a brisket right out of the bag. First thing you'll notice is it has a little bit of oxidization on there, so we're gonna trim that off. My first cut usually is just skimming the layer off of that. There's not too much on this one, so it's looking pretty good. We're just gonna take a thin layer off. The oxidizing is kind of where it gets this discoloration, a little bit of yeah, kind of you has get a little, cauliflower. Yeah, a little air in the bag. Right. And it lets, uh, yeah, you'll see that cauliflower effect that browns the meat. There's actually nothing wrong with that. You could eat that. It just has a little bit of a different mouthfeel. And a lot of that uh, oxidized fat burns and gets kind of acrid. So we just cut that off. So, and then uh, we're gonna stay on this side. Next cut we do, you see this hard fat right here? We're gonna take that out. Is that the type of fat you make tallow out of? Correct, yeah. Tallow, we use everything. So tallow, I'll use the hard fat, and I'll also use the soft. But this hard fat is great for the sausage because uh, it keeps the fat in place. We're gonna stay on this side, and you see here all this little kind of skin fat. And you, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you get that reflective skin. I'm gonna remove that a little bit because that, that can prevent the smoke from penetrating the meat. So like this hunk of fat here, we're gonna kind of cut that down. You don't need to go too crazy with this. You don't have to worry about removing every single piece. You just want to give the smoke lots of good access places to permeate the meat. So I kind of just drag it around parallel to the meat just to barely take off that layer without wasting any of your meat there. And here I'm not going to worry too much. Anything that's uh, half an inch or less is going to burn. So right here I can see I have this thin flap. So I'm going to cut that whole flap off, so I'm not going to worry about trimming that because it's going to come off anyway. So then I'm going to flip that over, and this is where we're going to get the tomahawk. This is where your burnt ends come from. Meat candy, as we like to call it. We want to maintain the shape of the brisket, but also get as much of this good tomahawk. So I'm going to go in parallel and try to cut under that fat, but not into the meat, just straight across. And then this nose tilts up, it's doing like a bull nose. We're going to tilt that down so that you have this nice ovoid shape. So what I'm gonna do, I kind of pinch to feel that hard fat, get that right in there, and then you can, you can feel it. So like right now I can feel, I went right through fat into meat, that's perfect. So I wanna just kind of go parallel right across the top, keep a nice straight line. This is a beautiful tomahawk, by the way. This is a great example. And now I'm gonna start going down, because I wanna take that nose off anyway. Boom. That going to be some great burnt ends. I can tell you that right there. Somebody's cooking a brisket at home. Don't throw this part away, everybody. Don't throw it away. That so, is gold. All right. So now we have this brisket that looks kind of ugly. Looks kind of beat up, right? Right. This is a gorgeous brisket. Right there is my brisket. Right there. So what I'm going to do first is get rid of this bull nose. And a lot of this is good burnt end material. I'll show you in a second here. Now a lot of people when they're doing a brisket, you know, for their backyard parties and barbecues, they don't even trim it really. No, they, they just, take a little fat off. Right. Of that. They leave all that on. And what you're doing is then you're putting something in your smoker, your grill that's going to take a lot of that heat energy, but you're not going to use anything with it. If you're going to eat it, great. Why not? But also, this if you just cook on the entire brisket, then when you go to slice it up. You're probably gonna toss that out because you're gonna have thin slices with all this gristle. Right. But this is burnt end material. Now they get their briskets from Brandt. Tell us a little bit about Brandt. I love their product, especially the premium grade. Um, we get a nice, consistent brisket, um, good level of marbling. Right now we're starting to get our shape, right? This here is where we took the uh, tomahawk off. We still have some pretty thick fat, so I'm gonna trim that down. And I kind of push as I cut because I want to feel how thin that meat is. So like right here, I can tell that's a little thin, so I'm just going to trim a little bit of that edge. And that's keeper. I'm saving that. We're going to take that nose down. You really want to make sure you don't want the nose to flip up. Like on a car, 
got a spoiler there. What does it do? It pushes the air up. Right. We want the air to go boom and kind of torpedo right over that. So one thing I learned is that full nose you want to take down. So let's see, I'm going to trim this because we're going to save that little bite. It might seem silly, but that right there is going to go to hamburger. Our hamburgers are made from brisket, so they are delicious. You got to stop in here over the Wild Fig, everybody. It's out in Summerlin, right behind the Dollar Tree on Lake Mead and Far Hills. It's kind of tucked in there. You know, it was a little tough for me to find the first time I showed up, but this is my favorite place in town for barbecue, everybody. Follow your nose to find us. Right. If you're at the dollar store, you'll smell us. <laughs> Everything they do, they do very, very well. So right here on this side, remember I skipped cutting that fat because I knew I was going to trim that corner. Now we're going to flip it and then I kind of feel it out. Right there I can kind of feel it drops off and it gets thin. So right there, if we put that brisket on the smoker, all that's going to burn. So it's worthless. All that's going to burn. So let's cut it off now and preserve it. So I'm going to cut it off, make a nice rounded shape. Yeah, dynamics people. There you go. And that trim I'm actually going to keep, so I should have cut that, because I thought I was going to toss this, but it's not so thin that I have to toss it. So instead of going in the garbage, you got a nice little chunk of brisket there. And that's going to go towards burgers or sausage. It's going in something. It's going in something. Worst case, it goes in a, it goes in a dog food for all our dogs. And our dogs eat well here. They get brisket. This is a dog-friendly establishment. Yes, it right? is. Which now, I like. You know, I'm a dog-friendly kind of guy. Shout out to Jasper and Minsky. <laughs> so I'm going to cut this down. Now we're at the final stage where we're just shaping and removing surface fat. So I've got the good overall shape. Now it's starting to look like a brisket. Now all this fat, you want to take this down to about a quarter inch without leaving big gaps in the meat, uh, which can burn. And you're going to have some gaps because the fat isn't uniform across the whole cut here. But the best you can do on this will help your end result. You want to keep, this soft fat is good. This soft fat is going to render into the meat. Hard fat, you want to kind of get rid of altogether. But this soft fat, I want to get down just short enough so that it renders into the meat without leaving too much on that final product. So here I'm going to go parallel to the cut. Kind of looking for more like that. And it's kind of challenging because this fat will be different consistency. You'll notice hard fat and then you get this cottage cheese looking fat and you'll get some that's really rubbery and they all, it all behaves differently and you'll kind of learn as you work with it what fat does what. Take that down. This is a great looking brisket. This is a really nice looking brisket. Oh man, I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's done. Oh, it's going to be gorgeous. It's going to have a good seven hours or so out there on that smoker. We take our time. That smoker temperature is nice and low, low and slow. What temperature do you cook at? It depends on the product. Usually in the morning we like to start around 250. Uh, if he's doing sausage, we got to keep it lower than that. Um, and we have post oak out there right now. So in the morning, I'll start the fire with some almond because it's a good heat source. It gets this fire started, but we don't want, we don't like the almond smoke as much. Post oak is just Steve, Steve's ticket is that post oak. Now I'm gonna cut this point. So we've got, I'm gonna take this fat down a little bit more, but we're getting pretty close on that. And we need to make sure this is rounded as well. Any, you don't wanna have, you wanna avoid any corners. So like that might look, oh, it's cut pretty good, but that'll burn because the airflow is going to hit that and stop. It's not going to go over as quickly. So you want to rounded corners are key. So I'm just going to round this without removing much product. So I'm not looking to trim, I'm just looking to shape. And again, this is where having a nice sharp knife pays dividends because you can make these precise little cuts. And these are little things that at first I didn't realize how they mattered. It matters. All of this matters. There we go. That's a beautiful looking brisket right there. It is, it is. So each brisket is its own unique individual thing, everybody. You're not looking for anything cookie cutter. Uh, you just want to get that, that aerodynamic shape like a flat football. All right, everybody, we've got a 
about 10 bristles here all trimmed up and ready to go. We're going to go ahead and get these seasoned and put them on the smoker. Just mustard, a little bit of canola oil and water, and we just do enough just to cover the briskets uh, to make it a little sticky to bind the seasoning on there. This isn't for flavors, you don't want to overdo it. But again, everybody, don't worry, the mustard's not going to change the flavor of your brisket or anything. This is just to, to bind the seasoning to the brisket and really kind of help you develop that nice bark where you can get a proper cook. Exactly. This is a light coverage. It's literally just like that much. Just enough so that it looks a little cloudy. And then this seasoning will stick to it nicely. Now we've got our rub right here. And you've got pepper, salt, coffee. Ooh, and you can smell that. That's the first nose you get when you first open that up. Oh yeah. You get that coffee. And that adds to it. Um, so I mix in a big heaping scoop of pepper, maybe half a cup of salt, brisket seasoning, and then you're good to go. So what we'll do for the first one, give it a nice coating, and you don't want it too heavy. So on the meat side, you still want to see a lot of the meat. That for me is about a good level of bark. Then I'll do a little bit around the sides and just kind of give this bad boy a shake. And that'll help get seasoning up on the edges, on the sides. And then I'll do the top a little heavier. On the fat side, I'll do a little more so that seasoning, that salt, can help dissolve that fat and really cut in there. And then give it a little shake. And then right there, you got a well-seasoned brisket. The main thing with the, the Seasoning is you just want to make sure you have consistent coverage, no big gaps where it's too heavy or too light. This will help you <laughs> find all your mistakes in cutting. That's good coverage, but I can still see the meat through there. Need a little more on the end. Give it a shake. It's ready for the smoker. That'll sit overnight and be beautiful in the morning, ready for the smoker. So when you season brisket, Anthony, it's not just ready to throw right on the smoker, right? You should let no. it, you know. You can, people do, but we don't. We want to give it at least a day. So I like to get that seasoning on there, especially that salt. That salt's going to break down that top layer, help all the other seasonings kind of get in that meat. We give it a good 24 hours. I mean, you can put them right on. Um, conversely, you don't want to go much longer than that. Like, we're not going to let them sit all weekend in the seasoning. Because uh, it'll get dried out, and you'll get a, you don't want that salt on there for that long. But 24 hours seems to be the ticket. And again, you heard it, everybody. These guys do it right. I've said it before. I've said it again. Barbecue is the labor of love. You know, if you don't have the patience to do it, it's not for you, everybody. But again, they season their brisket 24 hours before they even put it on the doggone smoker. basically becoming a cooking surface. So I've spread this out, little spritz of water just to help the, the edges adhere together. Got some Texas butter that we're gonna do a little drizzle on the bottom. And I always do point up because I want these facing the same way when they go back on the smoker. A little more Texas butter. Now, a lot of people swear by different temperatures on when they're gonna take this off with the smoker and actually mm -hmm. wrap it. How do you know when yours is ready to wrap? Temperature is one thing, but it's also feel. Like you want to get your, you want to get your right temp, but you also pick it up and not have it be too jiggly. You want that firmness. You want to make sure that that fat is rendered. This is perfect. A lot of times you'll get it and it springs back way too fast. That means it's not ready yet. But temperature is one thing, but feel is huge. 
So I'm going to do a first hold. I want to go all the way, but not too much, not too little. I want to make sure I have full coverage right to the edge. Make some nice clean creases, and I'm basically just making an envelope. Fold that up, hold it nice and tight. And when you put this back on, you go fat side up again? Yeah, I'm going to do this end towards the, towards the top, towards the fire, since it's a little thicker. So fat side it up. Pull it down to get it nice and snug. Make one little fold there. And then it's ready to go on. Boom. We do that little fold, and then when you get your tongs, you can go right under and get it right off in one piece. Season it, we smoked it up to about 160 and then we did the first wrap. Now it's up to 203 and we're going to do the second wrap. This is something you're not going to see a lot of people do. Why don't we wrap this a second time, Steve? Well, what well, well, we don't want to see happen here, so when I open this thing up, it's going to release a lot of juice. You let that thing sit overnight and that juice is just steaming. You know? The next one you're going to see is going to drop. Terrible. Basically, when you do the second wrap, you're stopping the cooking process. Stopping the cooking process. We're going to seal it up with a little bit more fat on the outside, but it's not going to, like a lot of people think we're just, by putting more fat on it, it's going to absorb more fat. It's not. It's going to kind of put like a nice seal over it, lock the moisture in that's in, already in there, and just stop the cooking. And all of this is 100% beef tallow. Put it just a little bit on this so it's, once, once we wrap it around, it's going to just completely seal the meat. Oh, that smells so delicious. So let's center it, bring in the sides. It's kind of like, I mean, it's not a lot different than the first wrap that we had two pieces of paper. So in layman's terms, what's the difference going to be in the actual texture and taste of the meat from doing this as opposed to if you just left it in the first wrap? So if I left it in the first wrap, you're going to come in tomorrow, and this is going to be kind of dry, falling apart, mealy. It's, it's, you know, you're not going to get that nice, beautifully well cooked meat that's just evenly cooked all the way across. So it kind of helps the natural moisture of the meat kind of, you know, become uniform throughout the whole rest. So you just put this in the hot box like this and let it rest overnight? No, it's actually kind of critical you stop the cooking process. So we're trying to leave it at room temperature for about an hour, hour and a half, bring it down to about 140 degrees to stop the cooking process, and then it goes into like really the rest cycle. And that's really kind of like, one of the most important parts of the whole process of brisket itself is that rest cycle. You want at least, I mean, some people say, you know, you want to rest breast for an hour, you want to rest for two hours. If it's anything less than like 10 hours of breast, it's really not going to have that texture that you're looking for. That texture, that really nice, good, lean piece of, you know, lean, well smoked meat is going to just hang out of your finger and not tear apart and be perfectly cooked. That means a really good long rest. Right. Well, you heard it here, everybody. The proof is in the pudding. Tomorrow, we're going to slice into this bad boy and give it a little taste. Wait till you see this. All right, everybody. So you see this trimming. You see this seasoning. You see this smoking. This has been on the smoker for about 8 to 10 hours, and then they let it rest for about 14 hours overnight, everybody. Can't stress you enough. You've got to let your brisket rest before you cut into it. So let's take a look and see what we got here, Steve. Well, you're absolutely right. And you can tell, I mean, so this is the brand. It is a smaller brisket, right? It's coming from a Holstein as opposed to an Angus. But you can see how he, when he handles this, everybody, just how soft that still is. I mean, you got the bark, but it is just definitely, you know, tender. It's got some jiggle to it. Absolutely. Gotta love that jiggle. Oh. And that's what we're looking at. That's the magic right there, right? A little squeeze. Your, well, your fat just completely rendered out, just dripping right through there. Right, nice little smoke ring. Oh, look at that. Go. This is brisket done right, everybody. You better get yourself over to the wild fig out there in Summerlin right away. There's really what you're looking for. The angle of the day. You know what I'm talking about? Well, look at that, everybody. Look at this thing. Falling apart perfectly. Oh, oh, oh. There it is. Oh, man. 
I was there too. Let's give this a test. Oh. <laughs> Steve, you really do do the best brisket I've ever had, man. This is incredibly tender. It's rich, but not too rich. Seasoned perfectly. Incredibly moist. We're talking about like that. That's your original burnt end right there. Mm. Look at that, the original burnt end. We've got a beautiful little piece of fat candy right there in the middle. Oh. <laughs> that might be one of the best bites of food I ever had right there. But, mm, this is brisket done right. Anything you get at the Wild Pig is going to be outstanding. Make sure you get in here right away. Tell them you saw them on Ribs and Ribs. Right on. Everybody, I hope you'll subscribe, like, maybe leave me a little comment. Sure helps the algorithm. I post new barbecue videos all the time, as well as reviews of Las Vegas' hottest barbecue joints. If you or anyone you know is considering a move within the Las Vegas area, I would love to be your realtor. Either call, text, or email, and we'll chat soon.